Okay, guys, I'm going to do a recap on today's uh, junior trial, um, what happened today, and any new information. Uh, in a stunning development at the junior trial Tuesday, star witness Kevin Alvarez revealed he will get time served for his role in the teen's chase beating and death if he truthfully testifies in this potential future in this and a potential future trials. Alvarez testified about his four page cooperation agreement with the office of the Bronx district attorney, which was entered into evidence. He revealed that he had pled guilty to manslaughter and first degree, which normally carries an eight and one third to 25 years and another count of conspiracy in the fourth degree, a nine, uh, non-violent felony. Have you been offered two potential sentences? Assistant Direct District Attorney Morgan Dolan asked the 20-year-old Alvarez, who said he was once a probationary member of the Trinitarios gang. Yes, ma'am, Alvarez replied. The prosecutor asked what happens if he doesn't truthfully testify at this in the future trials. I get sentenced to 25 years, Alvarez said. Then came the headline making revelation. What happens if you satisfy the agreement? The prosecutor continued. I get sentenced to time served on conspiracy in the fourth degree, Alvarez replied. There were many gasps from several people in the courtroom. Alvarez had testified on Monday about storming into the cruise and Chinky Bodega last June 20th, saying he punched Junior in the face and kicked him about the body repeatedly before dragging him out onto the sidewalk, where five attackers stabbed the 15-year-old Junior with knives and machete. Attorney Christopher Caron, who speculated on PIX11 News' Mary Murphy files Monday night that Alvarez likely had pleaded guilty to first-degree manslaughter and was asked about this agreement Tuesday. It's a sweetheart deal, Karan said. He has a big incentive to tell the truth because he has manslaughter conviction of 25 years hanging over him if he lies or doesn't cooperate. If he satisfies the conditions, the manslaughter plea gets withdrawn and vacated, making him a free man. But it's unclear what the future holds for Alvarez, who testified he is now considered a 357 no good by the gang. He's been held in protective custody since making a deal. Even when he's freed, he'll be looking over his shoulder for the rest of his life, Quran said. Okay, which I'm sure he's probably going to be relocated um, and given a new identity because there's no way they could put him out on the street and guarantee his uh, safety. There's absolutely no way. So if they're not giving him a new identity and stuff, there's no way in hell he's going to be able to get out and stay alive. Um, today, he said he knew he had killed the wrong guy just after stabbing, just after the stabbing death of Lissandro Guzman Feliz. Last June 20, the members of the Trinitarians were examining a photo of the gang members to make sure they had killed the right target. Kevin Alvarez, who had since become the star witness in the trial, looked at the photo and came to a dread dreadful conclusion. When I looked at the picture he testified to, I didn't see the kid we had chased and stabbed. The gang members were meeting that night on Boston Road in the Bronx to make sure they had gotten the right person, Alvarez said. The photo in question was a sunset crew that was feuding with the Los Soros set. Shor Los Soros set, who orchestrated the bodega attack. The photo allegedly came from a cell phone of the number two leader of the Shurez set, Frederick Colita. Then, Alvarez testified on Tuesday that the law Shurez boss, Diego Suero, who held the meeting at his apartment, was questioning who from that photo was the guy that they had just killed. Alvarez said they were confused, pointing to two different people in the picture that was captioned, Sunset Gun Set. Diego's asking Colita and Jose Munez Can Canalito, are we sure that that's right person? And the response was, yes, it's him, Alvarez recalled. 
But Alvarez knew they made a terrible mistake. Indeed, Alvarez told the jury on Monday that Junior kept insisting he wasn't affiliated with Sunset as he fought desperately for his life. The defense had already entered this photo into evidence last week, asking Bronx homicide detective Junior was raising his arms and throwing up gang signs with the Sunset crew. Uh, Detective Francis Orlando said empathetically that Junior was not in the photo. Alvarez testified he was so upset by what had happened outside the bodega that he left the apartment as the, game, the gang kept examining the photo. I guess I didn't agree with what happened, Alvarez said. Alvarez said he gave a ride to another gang member who was present at the stabbing. Later, lead prosecutor Morgan Dolan asked Alvarez to circle all the people from a Lost Shores gang picture who were either present at Suero's apartment before Junior's chase at the scene of the murder and later at Suero's apartment, including himself. He showed at least eight people in that picture. Later, Tuesday afternoon, the prosecution showed more photos to Alvarez and Judge Robert Neary grew frustrated. He handed testimony early and outside the courtroom. Spectator Jennifer Whistle reported a pregnant relative of a murdered defendant yelled at Junior's mother, calling her a foul word. As a precautionary measure, NYPD detectives put the mom, Leandra Felice, into an unmarked police car inside a courthouse garage and whisked her away. Early in the day, Felice was in court when Alvarez re revealed the cooperation agreement and signed prosecution, which could allow him to leave prison someday with time served. Felice told Pix11 by phone that she wanted to hear more about the deal before making a comment. Alvarez returns to court Thursday for cross-examining. Okay. Um, usually before um, they make a deal with somebody, they speak to the family of the deceased. Or of, you know, the family of the victim. Um, they usually do not make deals that uh, important without the knowledge of the family. So, I think maybe she said she didn't have a comment yet because she really didn't know what to say. Um at that point, uh, probably knowing that people were going to have a little bit of backlash toward her for agreeing to having him get out on time served, um, and I can totally understand that, um, with them being a little pissed off about him not getting, you know, the time he needs to get. And deserves to get. Um, but also, unfortunately, when you're dealing with the court and plea deals, sometimes that's the only way of getting inside information. It's the only way of getting info from an unlikely source, such as someone who's in the gang. So a lot of times these plea deals are made because without them, the information wouldn't be given. So I could definitely understand the agreeing to the plea deal. And I can also understand people being upset about the plea deal, which would definitely make her not so, uh, what's the word I want to use? Not so eager to talk about it. Um, and I'm sure, you know, I know they have a gag order as far as that kind of stuff is concerned. So she probably cannot really talk details, um, as much as, people would want her to. Um, and since this is the first time people are hearing about um, exactly what his plea deal was, um, we knew yesterday that there, or last week, that there were, there were deals on the table, but we didn't know exactly what they were, especially 
that he would get time served. Um, that probably was the last thing I thought uh, they were going to bring to the table. Um, but I guess they really do feel like without his inside testimony, there, there wouldn't be as much information as they really need, um, to make sure that these guys, uh, remain in jail. So with that being said, this is, uh, day two of the third week of trial and I still don't believe the, I got the wrong kid shit. I don't believe that for a second. Um, quite honestly, I don't know what the truth is anymore. I don't think that he was confused with another gang member. And we all know that the sex tape was bullshit. That was Junior's cousin from Pennsylvania. Um, so it had nothing to do with no sex tape. And I do not think it was mistaken identity. I think that that's just what they are using as a reason for killing him. Um, and like I said before, there really is no okay reason for someone to be killed that way. And I'm not agreeing with what happened. Um, and I'm not saying anything for a fact, but I really do not believe that, uh, they got the wrong guy. I think that that was complete bullshit. Um, but that's the story they're sticking to. Um, of course, as usual, I will keep you guys updated on any new information uh, tomorrow uh, and everything that was, you know, going to be said tomorrow. Um, and that's basically it. Uh, like I said, I, I really, really, really um, love how you guys have supported me and stuck by me and listened to my videos, um, through all of this, um, and continue to, I'm just looking through to make sure that there's nothing. There's nothing more important for me to bring up. See, and here, and here once again in the medical report, it only states, okay, New York City Office of Chief Medical Examiner announced that the cause of death for slain teen Lissandro Guzman Felice, the boy was slashed in the neck and died after running to the hospital three blocks away. Um, he only mentions a stab wound to the neck. There's no mention of any other wounds anywhere on his body, which is why I told you guys I am totally sitting here waiting for the detailed, okay, medical report. Each and every mark. It may not matter to you, but it fucking matters to me. Because I want to know what I was seeing, okay? I want to see how much of it was fucking real and how much was just so that it looked like, you know, they did their job. Um, and that's really what I'm waiting for. Uh, I don't know when he's going to, uh, 
do his uh, testifying when they're going to call him, if it's going to be this week or next week. But I am seriously waiting for that because that is really going to be the game changer.